Welcome back to On The Rise as Canada has wrapped up the September friendly window. After a 2-1 win over the USMNT, Canada then went on to a 0-0 result against L3 against Mexico. And this wasn't a 0-0 that was back and forth. Very exciting. Lots of chances. High paced. This was the complete opposite. A bog standard 0-0 with very few and far between chances and very little high quality chances but also a very high intensity and very physical game which saw over 40 fouls in this game and mexico truly worked their tactic tactical plan perfectly it's not one that anyone would have liked to see but it was a plan that they executed exactly like they would have wanted but this game was very physical and overall it was a very boring 90 minutes for the supporters outlook it was one of those games that you look at and say yes we can take a few positives out of this game there's still a few talking points we're gonna have from this game but there's very few it wasn't a beautiful game it wasn't a fun sex game to watch by any means but it was still a game where canada can take some positives out of this which is still very good but before we jump into my match reaction guys i'd love to hear what you guys have to say down below in the comments drop a like hit that sub button guys and i really appreciate the support and we're gonna jump straight into things because like i said there was over 40 fouls in this game it was extremely physical and one of the key points for me is no one got injured no one got injured is the huge positive in this game over 40 fouls the mexican side completely set up in this game to nullify canada's attack to not let canada's pacey players whether it's liam millar whether it's alfonso davies ali ahmed richie larea not let them hit that second gear not let them play those quick one twos hit us in transition play fast football and mexico did that very well it's not a style of play that anyone wants to see but it is something you expect in CONCACAF, unfortunately. And yes, Canada and US set up to play football. Mexico completely didn't. Mexico didn't look to get their fast, attacking, exciting players involved in the game. They tried to nullify Canada's attack and then allow their forwards to have one or two big chances and hopefully take them, which they didn't because Canada was great defensively when they had to be. And this was a game, like I said, with few and far between chances on either end Canada had one chance that I can really recall that I think was a big chance and it wasn't a mistake it wasn't a poor shot it was a great finish but also a great save Kyle Ladin had a great header that he placed bottom right hand corner of the goal but it was a fantastic save from the Mexican goalkeeper so that's one where Kyle Ladin's been out of form you can say yes maybe if he's on a hot streak he scores that but you can't argue with Kyle Laren, where he put that ball, how well he rose up, how he was able to win that ball. And that was one of our really only chances I can recall in that match out of possibly an Afrifa uh, header in the 92nd minute that was headed away from him where he couldn't even head it. It was a beautiful ball from Jason Russell Rowe. But the fact that those are the chances this game had and in abundance, it, it just shows how little chances that there were in this canadian mexico game and that is down to the way mexico set up in this match very boring very nullifying what canada can do and not trying to play football and when mexico did create their chances which is very few and far in between just like canada alfonso davies was there to make a huge block or dane st Clair was there to make one or two massive saves and that is another huge say um positive and thing to take note of in this game Dane St. Clair. If you look at this Canadian goalkeeping pool now, Maxime Crepeau and Dane St. Clair, it is a huge landslide at the top of that goalkeeping depth chart now. Dane St. Clair and Crepeau have such a high gap between those top two and the third goalkeeper. It is a joke now. Dane St. Clair comes in, gets a cameo. He's had a few cameos now, and he was very good. Absolutely sensational performance from Dane St. Clair. Not amazing with his feet, but you don't have to be all the time. And when he was with his feet, he hit it long if he had to. He was able to play it short. But also, like I said, this was a very quiet game. And Dane St. Clair came up big when he had to. Made a few huge saves. Kept this Canadian team in it when he had to make those big saves. And that's all you got to ask from your goalkeeper. You don't need a ball-playing goalkeeper. That's a myth in my opinion. 
and Dane St. Clair show that you just need a shot stopper. When you're called upon, you make those big saves, you make those saves that matter, and Dane St. Clair did it. Just what Crapo does, Dane St. Clair can do it too. But Crapo does it at a higher level. And Canada now is two very good goalkeepers who should both be um, out of the MLS in my opinion. But that is just up to their career move and how they feel about moving to Europe at this point in their career. Both those goalkeepers are sensational and I really love what Dane St. Clair did yesterday. But also, like I hinted at, that Alfonso Davies block, I want to talk about this just very quickly, I want to talk about this. Davies made that block and every Canadian supporter would have seen this and if you didn't take notice of it, you will be now. Alfonso Davies made a huge block on that Mexico chance late in that game, maybe the 88th, 89th minute, something around there. Davies makes a crucial block and what does he do? He doesn't turn and get ready for the corner kick. He doesn't walk quietly, get set up, cover his man, play zone. He turns, gets pumped up, gets gassed, gets that team going, pushes Bombido, looks at Dane St. Clair. He gets all the boys rallied up because that's how much this important, how important these friendlies are. Some people were talking about how the win doesn't matter, how the result doesn't matter. Well, it truly means a lot to these Canadian players and especially Alfonso Davies. Before, he might have been the quieter player in the dressing room around Thibaut Hutchinson, around Milan Boyan, and now... Given that captain armband, you can see the difference on Alfonso Davies. He is a true leader out there. When he made that block, turned the Bombido, turned to Dane St. Clair, looked at the rest of the boys, got them riled up, got them pumped up. That's exactly what you need from a captain performance, and it was very good to see from Alfonso Davies. But as well, some other very interesting things, and a huge positive for me before we wind up and wrap up this reaction, guys was Nico Siegler. Nico Siegler came out for his Canadian men's national team debut. He is Canadian, he feels Canadian, and he wants to play for Canada, and he got to join Canada and play for his first match. And yes, Jesse Marsh hinted and said he was going to play central midfield, but Nico Siegler can also play at right back. Alistair Johnson leaves camp due to an injury. Sam Adekubi comes back in. Richie Larea is the only right back in the squad. Richie Larea always is carrying an injury, he comes back from an injury, and he was going to play the full game, but Nico Sigurd can play right back. And I think it's very interesting that Jesse Morris used him there. Yes, fans can take a note of that and can say, well, maybe he's going to be deployed at right back. But I think that's complete bogus, because especially when Marks, Marsh is tinkering with a 4-2-3-1, a 4-2-2, or a 4-4-2, you're going to need midfielders. You're going to need a young midfielder. You're going to need a young six. And that is what Nico Sigor is, a central defensive midfielder. And he can play right back. He does it at club. He's done it at the youth levels in Croatia. And that's why he filled in for Richie Larea. Give him some time. Give him some rest. He has a game coming up with Toronto FC. There's no need to go out there and kill Richie Larea. No need to run his fitness into the ground. He has some huge club games coming up. He has a, another friendly coming up against Panama at BMO. And I'm sure Nico Sigor is going to be with the club, if, is going to be with Canada then as well. And will get more minutes and probably at central midfield. So I don't think him playing at right back is anything to take. Just a very exciting debut. Didn't look out of position at all. Got thrown straight into the deep end. Got in some huge tackles. Got in deep with some Mexican players. And it was very exciting to see. There's a few positives, guys. I have to pick out positives in that game. There's very few negatives. You can't take out any negatives in a game like that. There's some great positives, whether it's the formation, the debut from Seager, the leadership from Fonzie, Dane St. Clair's brilliant performance, Laren able to get him the end of a great chance. Just... There's some great things to take away from this game, even though it was very sporadic, very physical, very boring. A very boring 90 minutes and a very poorly ref 90 minutes. I didn't want to get negative. I didn't want to talk about the ref, but I could have, and I'm going to bypass that. I'm going to try and have the five things we learned on this game and also going to have a September friendly breakdown, reviewing both the games, reviewing just how I thought some players came out of that some of the market rises and drops and we're going to break it all down in the next couple of videos guys and i really hope you're enjoying the content and let me know your guys thoughts down below in the comments down below hit the like button and drop a sub because support means a whole lot guys and i'll see you guys for the next one peace